Watch Dogs Legion is finally coming this fall after a bunch of delays, and it's weird. It's a hard game to explain. More interestingly, it seems like it's changing the formula for an open world, steal cars, shoot stuff type of game. The open world crime genre is honestly a familiar one, but Legion has about five interesting things we're looking forward to seeing in this game that we're gonna break down here. Now, also, keep in mind, this isn't sponsored by Ubisoft or Watch Dogs. We're just gonna judge the game when it comes out with a before you buy video, but we like tearing apart open world games game concepts and talking about them. So let's get started off with number five. First, the big thing, let's talk about the elephant in the room, the game changer here. It's the fact that you can recruit NPCs off the street. NPCs, for those of you that don't know, is a non-player character. Um, random citizens milling about this open world London can be recruited and then you can play as them. You do not play as a player created character and you do not play as like a traditional protagonist character. You basically pick up randos off the street. You can play as anyone. Now apparently these NPCs you can pick up just exist in the world like any old fleshed down NPC open world system does. You know, they have a schedule, a routine, they may be connected to other NPCs, but you gotta bring them over to your cause, the dead sec cause. You can scan their phone for all of their life information just like you do in the previous Watch Dogs games, and then you can actually usually see a list of things they've done and which you can investigate. It's cool because you're kind of like hacking and exploiting information to find out who would join up with with you and then you pursue them. So then that person is then labeled as a potential recruit and you can talk to them and they'll give you a mission or a task like that to do in order to bring them over to your side. Now do that mission or task and then like boom, apparently they just call you up and then they're a new operative who you can play as at any time with their own unique voice, look, and class. Now is that a satisfying game mechanic? We don't know yet, honestly, you know, but at the very least, it's almost like a cheesy video game version of Trinity recruiting Neo in the original Matrix or something. Now, of course, this is very different than your typical open world game, how this goes, you know, where most of them, the NPCs are pretty much meaningless fodder. Here, they can uh, potentially be so much more if this idea works out and if it's fun, of course. Now over at number four, once you have that person under your wing, what do you do with them? Well, they have classes to be assigned. Apparently there are three overarching classes. Hacking, of course, then a more combat oriented class and a stealth class. Then diving in is where they get more unique because certain NPCs have their own specific passive or active perks and even entire abilities. This has been highlighted in trailers and stuff, sorta, you know, like certain characters being able to do special hacking, uh, temporarily cloak themselves from surveillance We've seen the grandma use a cool taser. We've seen the construction worker use a construction tool as a unique weapon. That type of stuff is intended to make all of the characters feel unique. You get more access to their available stuff by leveling them up and using them. And I really would like to see how far this can go. It's like, I mean, they can only design so many unique things around characters, right? Making infinite possibilities would require infinite manpower and infinite space and resources. So it's obviously not like every single citizen and will be completely different, right? It will just kind of simulate that feeling. I'm just hoping it's fun. Discovering all of the citizens who do have good unique perks and stuff, almost like kind of how if some RPGs have rare loot that has really cool passive or active perks. Now it's like that, but with people you collect. You can apparently see all of this stuff when you scan someone with your phone so you can kind of pick and choose who you want to pursue for their special abilities and perks. Kind of, <laughs> kind of like Tinder, I guess? So for an open world game like this, we haven't seen many where you actually stop and pay attention to the individual random NPCs on on a granular level, let alone they become your own roster of RPG type characters. Again, I know I said it in the last point, not to sound like a broken record, but hope it works. Now at number three, of course, there's how you interact with the open world, which is a bit unique itself. One of the more interesting things, of course, is acquiring unique NPCs, but using their job or their role to get into certain places. So say like you get a security guard on your side or the construction worker, someone who has a sort of uniform that lets them waltz right into a place, no questions asked. Maybe a secure top secret construction site or a hospital that was highlighted in one mission. It's a social stealth type of thing, something that as a stealth game fan, we're super into with games like the earlier Assassin's Creed games and even Hitman games, but uh, we've never quite seen it integrated in a go anywhere, do anything open world crime game like this, you know? Then there's of course hacking style stuff you'd expect from a Watch Dogs world, using and hacking the tech around you to make people's lives kind of a living hell and to infiltrate places, and also there's spider robots. <laughs> but what's also interesting for stealth completionist fans, uh, there are a lot of non-lethal weapons. Apparently a large portion 
portion of the weapons are non-lethal. Half of the weapons in the game, in fact. So it's something Watch Dogs has embraced in the past, but seem to be going even deeper here, which is cool about these games. You know, you're a person fighting for, I guess, good. So you're not necessarily going to be gunning people down in the streets with an AK-47, only the bad guys really, and only if you want to. We have seen some clips of some pretty sweet looking third person gunplay though. I'm hoping that plays as good as it looks, but we'll see. Now down to number two, since there's all this weird new NPC stuff, the game handles death a little bit differently. It's kind of permadeath, but it needs an explanation. It's also been changed a bit from what it was like when the game was first announced. So if you're doing a violent mission against police or armed enemies, and if you get seriously or critically injured, you can either surrender and then potentially be rescued by playing as another character, or you can keep fighting and take the risk of dying for real and being removed from your pool of playable characters. That character will then be temporarily in a cooldown period because they are in jail or hospitalized, so you're gonna have to wait before playing them again. Now, apparently some characters, as a specific trait they might have or perk, they can die off entirely, but those are gonna be rare. So this is like a nice spin on the classic thing you usually get in these types of open world games. In like GTA, you get arrested and then just respawn outside the police station. It doesn't feel like a real repercussion to getting stuck waiting in jail or healing in a hospital. So there's maybe a bit more weight to it here. And there's also some fun stuff to be had, it seems, by trying to rescue your other characters when available and the character swapping stuff. Also, something that does seem even more interesting is that you can enable actual real permadeath mode if you want to challenge. You know, if you want to really amp up the difficulty, you can set it so when these characters die, they really, really die. I think some people might prefer to play it this way. It's cool like that. You know, at the end of the day, they're still NPCs and they're expendable. But losing a certain character you may have leveled up and have a really unique perk, losing that could really hurt. Now down to number one, let's talk about the world itself and some little details. It's a near future London, constantly controlled and surveilled with high tech stuff. There are hackable security cameras, drones flying around which you can hack, regular small ones and even big construction or cargo ones that you can hack and even ride on. The game has a lot of electric cars cause it's the future and because of the way electric cars work, many of them are said to accelerate extremely quickly. Also, the game world is just flooded with Albion propaganda. Albion is the prime private security firm that has essentially taken over the city. It fight back and take control of the city borough by borough by doing, you know, open world mission-y type stuff. And you'll see the propaganda fade away and sections of the city become nicer and less oppressed. This sounds like something that could go into dangerous Ubisoft territory where it's just check the boxes, conquer the territory, climb the tower, check everything off the map. I'm really hoping it feels significantly different. I'm hoping it does because it does have Clint Hawking behind the wheel, a game developer behind some of the early Splinter Cell games and Far Cry too. It's also important to know, you know, despite the early chatter, Legion isn't a complete one-to-one -one recreation of London. It's more of a representation, but you can still expect weird small streets and lots of iconic neighborhoods. As someone from New York, I gotta say, like I I've been to London, it's a hell of a city, man, and I'm looking forward to exploring the game world more than anything else here. Here's just hoping that Watch Dogs Legion is a fun, focused game, and it has the potential to fall to the typical trappings of Ubisoft BS and open world bloat, like I said, but these more unique sounding things we highlighted will hopefully make a difference. But again, like I've been saying, we don't know for sure, we don't have the game yet, but we wanted to give you guys a little bit of information and a little bit of speculation and, and try a new type of video here talking about upcoming games. So we're really looking forward to hearing from you guys what you think about Watch Dogs Legion. I know there's a lot of skepticism out there. I'm kind of with you guys. So be sure to let us know that skepticism down in the comments. Maybe you're on the opposite side. Maybe you think it looks incredibly unique and finally we're getting a Watch Dogs game that really kind of does its own weird wacky thing. Maybe you like the more serious stuff of Watch Dogs 1. I don't know, whatever type of fan you are, let's talk about Watch Dogs the series down in the comments. Now, if you learned something from this video, uh, maybe this helped you out, clicking the like button legit helps us out. We appreciate that. And if you're new, consider subscribing because man, we put out videos every single day. But as always, thanks for watching and we'll see you guys next time.